five, four, three, two, one. He has six million of his own loyal followers and has wrecked up to 2.5 billion views in just one year. He's best known for his mind-blowing special effects, light-hearted comedy, and how-to videos that expose the method behind his madness. Some of his most recent projects even include collabs with Tom Holland and Jared Leto. This talented creator is one of Lightrix's first ambassadors and a huge video user. Let's give a warm welcome to Brandon B. I don't really know what's going on. Oh, wow. Hello, VidCon. Wow. It is so exciting to be here. Boy, do we have a great panel ahead of us. But before we get started, we're going to record a quick video for something we're going to be making a little bit later. So on the count of three, I need everyone here to go absolutely crazy. One, two, three! <laughs> Incredible. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. My co-host needs no introduction. She is the queen of social media, the biggest female creator on TikTok, and has built multiple humongous brands online. Please go absolutely crazy for Charlie D'Amelio! Hi, guys. Charlie, so great to have you up here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So, I thought the best way for us to jump into this panel was going to be with a quick fire round, just so we could all get to know you a little bit better. Absolutely. Okay, let's jump straight in. Charlie, who's your favorite creator? My sister, 100%. <laughs> what would you be doing if you weren't a content creator? I think I would be full-time dancing for sure. What was your first video that went viral? I had two videos that I would say went viral. The first one got about 8,000 likes and that was just me with my hometown friends just dancing around. Um, and then the second one that actually went viral was a duet with a creator called Move With Joy and it was an easy dance. What inspired you to make those videos? I mean, it was mostly just hanging out with my friends in the moment, wanting to have fun, you know? <laughs> I, that, that's the best way to, to let content be born. I remember yeah. my first viral video was a video that I actually shot with my brother. We went down to the lake together because we wanted to shoot a video where it looked like I was levitating over a lake. And the way we were going to shoot it was I was going to wrap a rope around my chest and he was going to hold me up. And the idea was we would edit out the rope and post so it looked like I was levitating. But as he was holding me up as I'm leaning over the lake, his hand slipped and he let go and I ended up just face planting into the lake. After we shot it, I was so gutted. I thought, you know what? Why don't I just upload the video anyway? And it ended up being my first viral video. I love that. That's how it happens. When you least expect it, for sure. Yeah, it's always the authentic content that does the best. 100%. So the first time you had a video go viral, what was going through your mind in that moment? The first video of mine to actually go viral was right before a dance camp that I was doing. So it was a long car ride with my mom and a bunch of notifications started to pop up and I was definitely a little bit freaked out but then got into dance class and could not use my phone for a few hours. So that was a little weird for me and then the ride home was just 
mind-blowing and lots of confusion for me, for sure. I mean, what was that like heading into dance camp and then going into school the next day after that? I think it was... It wasn't weird because it didn't feel real. It happened so fast and just out of nowhere that I was just hoping that no one would see it. <laughs> At what point did all of this start actually feeling real to you? Because for so long during lockdown, you were creating these humongous videos and getting millions of views. And then as soon as lockdown finished, you actually got a glimpse of the real world. What was that like actually seeing all of your lovely fans? Yeah, I think for me, I still have to convince myself that it's real sometimes. It's definitely a little weird to come here and do things like this and have people that actually care about what I have to say. That's very fun, but it's also very different than what I'm used to. Um, but I notice now a lot of times when I am in front of bigger groups of people, it definitely does get a little emotional just because for so long I was posting for myself and now I feel like I'm actually posting for people that care about me and that's that's a really nice feeling. So I'd love to know, Charlie of today, 2022, what is your favorite type of content to create? I think a lot of my favorite content to create is content that I don't post. I have lots of drafts of me and my friends just making random videos that I think are super fun, but I don't post them all the time. I will every so often, but there's lots of stuff that I make just for myself and I'll look back at it and that's like the best thing in the world. I mean, how do you decide whether a video is gonna make the upload button or whether it's gonna make the drafts? What's the deciding factor? Yeah, it's very in the moment if I don't post it right after I take it, it is most likely never getting posted. That's just kind of always how I think. Um, yeah, I, it's really whatever I'm feeling at that moment, but definitely once it gets into the drafts, it's staying there forever. <laughs> I think I'm scared to ask, how many videos are actually in the drafts? There's probably 2,400. Oh my God, can anyone raise their hand in here if, any, if, if a single person has more than 2,400 drafts? We got, we got, oh, we got a couple back. Oh my God, that's absolutely insane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How many? Oh, we'll come to the Q&A Q very shortly, Q&A at the end. <laughs> so, Charlie, I'd love to know, you've worked with some incredible people, you've done some amazing collabs. Who's been your favorite collab so far? Yeah, I think for me, collaborations are always a very fun thing to do. I feel like a lot of my collaborations have been unplanned, just running into someone and making a video and it being posted, and we never go into it asking, do you want to collab? Do you want to make videos together? It, it's very in the moment, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I feel like some of my best ones were Tiffany Haddish. It was very out of nowhere. We were just both about to go on. We were both at the Ellen show, and she came into the green room, and she was like, you need to teach me dance. So I was like, okay, and then we did it, and I couldn't post it. That's one of the ones where it made it out of the drafts. But after the episode came out, I was able to post it, and that was really nice. But I think some of the other things were um, music videos I've done that were really fun. And it was um, not as much of a collab, but it was someone giving me the opportunity to be a part of their creative, which was really fun. What do you think you've learned from working with such incredible names? I think for me, those really in-depth conversations, I feel like that's why I don't go into these meetups with the intention of a collaboration or to get a video out of it, because sometimes you can just sit and talk to someone and learn so much about everything, whether it's really anything in media or entertainment, you really learn the most by talking to people that are in it full time and that's where I've gotten some of my best advice. But it does get a little bit weird when you are talking to someone for like a very long time and then 
you say, well, can I have a picture? Because it's, you don't want to ruin that such, you don't want to ruin that special moment. And I feel like for me, I get more out of a conversation than I would a picture. I would rather be able to just sit and talk, which I think is something that I've been able to do throughout all of this, which is really nice. I mean, I'd love everyone here to be able to get a scoop from inside your viral brain. Is there a specific thing you look for in a video after you've finished filming it that makes you go, yes, that video is gonna go viral? I honestly don't think I've ever looked at a video and thought about if it would go viral or not. It's very, it's very much if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No one can tell. There's no way to figure that out. So I just go into it. If I like the video, I'll post it. If I don't, I won't. I mean, Charlie, you definitely have the most incredible fans, doesn't she? <laughs> How would you say your fans have evolved and grown as you've gotten older? Yeah, I think throughout the beginning, I started this when I was 15 years old and I just turned 18. So obviously a lot of time has passed, a lot has changed, but I remember it was always the first, the first time that I swore or my first tattoo that was like the craziest thing to people and people were getting mad and I couldn't understand why but for a lot of people they still see me as that same 15 year old that I was when I started even though I've changed and progressed so much as a person and with that I've gotten people that'll watch me that are a little bit older which is nice to have some new people that like to watch me but also it is, I think, difficult for some people to come to terms with, but that is part of growing up. And I, I know that the people that were there from the beginning, a lot of them are still here with me and supporting me through everything, so I think that that's a really nice thing. And your family, uh, you're such a tight pack, which is so lovely to see. How do you think collaborating with your family and creating content with them has influenced, I guess, the brand you've built and the type of videos you make? Absolutely. I think going to events and things like this, if I were going alone, it would be very different. I don't think that I could do this without my family. When I first started coming to LA, I would go with my big sister even before she did social media. So. It was never not going to be all of us. We're very, very close. I'm with my family every day. My dad's here right now. <laughs> I hate to be by myself. I would not enjoy that at all. And it's also important that I have that support system through, through all of this because it can be a lot to deal with, especially when you're kind of coming into your own but having my mom and my dad and my sister has been the most refreshing thing because even when the day's over and you turn your phone off, you still have those people around you that will love and support you through every step of the way. It's definitely no secret that you and the entire family have absolutely blown up. What do you think the secret is that's enabled all of you to grow to the size you are today? I think for us, it's the fact that, or what I've heard from people that follow us, which is a very great thing to hear, is that they kind of look to my parents as a parental figure, which I think is really nice. Um, firsthand, I've, I've heard it. I've seen my parents become parents to my friends and, and people surrounding me, and I think that they've done a great job at being parents and not wanting anything from anyone else and always just being there as a support and I think that that's what differentiates them from everyone else and I also just think with me and my sister we have such a unique relationship where we are sisters obviously so we have our ups and downs if anyone has siblings you know what that's like but at the end of the day we will always be there to protect and support each other through everything she is Definitely my best friend, and I think that that really shows in our content. I, I love that. I love that. How do you guys all decide what type of content do you create? Do you, is there a strategy? Are you looking for trends? What's running through your mind when you're about to create a new video? Yeah, I think the best part about what I do is that there is 
absolutely no strategy. There's no posting schedule. There's no type of content I have to make on a certain day. I kind of get to do whatever I want, which is really nice. And if I was on a schedule, I think it would show and it would be a lot different than what I do today. And I, I think the fact that I get to make videos that I enjoy making instead of it being up to anyone else makes it a lot better. And I also think it helps with burnout that I've seen happen to a lot of other people. So I'm very happy that I get to really do it on my own terms. I, I completely agree. I think when people always ask me, what's one piece of advice you give to starting creators who are just fresh into the space? It is always create the content that you love to create. I think it's the single most important thing you can do as a creator, because no matter what's happening on the algorithm, no matter how the pieces of content are performing, if you genuinely love the content you create, it will always shine to the top. Absolutely. What would you say some other advice that you would give to up and coming content creators? I would say, don't tie yourself down to anything specific. Make whatever you feel like making at that point in time in your life. It's, it's not worth it to always be forced to do one thing. I feel like if you do that, you can only really do that for so long until you get bored of it and you want to switch. And if you're so used to only making one type of content, you can feel kind of trapped. So I think just have fun, make videos, make videos with your friends, meet new people, enjoy the ride no matter which way it goes because you can't you can't plan any of this out you have no idea how a video is going to do until it's already done so don't don't think too much about it just make what you enjoy making love that love that So, you and your family are starting to move into the TV space with your Hulu series. Now you've sort of dipped your toes into both sides, the socials and the TV. What do you prefer working in? I think for me, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It is so different. With the Hulu show, it's obviously a lot more of my voice. It's a, a little bit more vulnerable. Um, I speak, which I don't really do on my TikTok, so that's a big difference, but I also think short form versus long form video is different to film. It's over months and months for the show to happen and with a TikTok it's in 10 minutes. So it's just so different. And I can watch my TikToks back. I can't watch the show back because I hate listening to my voice, but it's definitely an amazing accomplishment and I'm so happy that I get to be doing it with my family because I could not do it alone. So Charlie, you've also got a bunch of other really exciting projects in the pipeline. Is there anything that you can talk about at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a fragrance coming out towards the end of this month. And I've been working on that for, I believe, two and a half years. So very long time. But it's been something that I've been extremely invested in from the first day. So the fact that it's actually going to be coming out, it's gonna be an Ulta, it's called Born Dreamer. If you wanna get it, I recommend Woo! it. Yeah. But I've been wearing it every single day for the past probably over a year now, and it's been really fun. I got to go to the south of France to go to the actual labs where they make the fragrance. I got to learn so much about what goes into one fragrance and it's so much time and so much work and so much energy that goes into one and I feel like we've perfected it to the max and I'm so proud of how good it is, every aspect about it and that is my favorite project that I'm working on that's coming out soon. I'm definitely excited to wear it myself as well. <laughs> So it is crazy to think you started making videos from your bedroom and now you are collaborating with some of the biggest brands in the world, Light Tricks being one of them. How's that transition been for you? I think for me, it's been an incredible transition when you're working with people that understand and appreciate what you do. I think it's very easy to discredit yourself when you're working with companies or brands or anyone in general. But I think the fact that Light Tricks has been so amazing with letting me be myself and making things that I enjoy, um, like my template, I feel like that has been such an amazing experience because they listen to me every step of the way. And I've obviously been 
working with brands before where there's a campaign and they'll do it with or without me, but when you really get to create something together with a brand, it is such an amazing feeling when it comes out and you know that you guys worked on it together. So Charlie and I are both brand ambassadors for Lightrix, and Lightrix make all of our favorite apps that we already use as creators. Uh, for me, the reason I wanted to partner with Lightrix was I started learning visual effects from the age of 12. I locked myself in my bedroom, and I teach myself really advanced software on my expensive computer. But now, Lightrix have built a series of apps where they've brought all of that technology to a mobile phone and made it accessible for everyone. And what that means is creators coming into the space now have a much vaster toolkit at their disposal and can make much bigger content. Absolutely. I think it's you did that. You, you practiced. You, you did all the behind-the-scenes stuff. But for me, if I want to make a compilation of videos, I'll go into Video Leap and I will put my videos in and it's done for me and I like it that way because it's easy. But it, they really made it so easy to use for people. I've tried to make those edits that my fans make and they make it look so easy and then you try it and it's like the worst thing that I've ever seen in my life and I cannot do it at all. So the fact that I have Video Leap and Photo Leap to do all these types of editing has been so cool. So I was very excited to see you have already jumped into Video Leap and straight away made a template already. Um, there is a phone waiting for us somewhere. Let's come bring it up so we can get, up, get it up on screen. This will just take a second to load up. Here we go. So this is Charlie's template behind me. And it's awesome. Everyone remember that little clip we filmed before? So I haven't actually told you about this, Charlie. I've been filming a video on my journey over to VidCon. Okay. And I thought we'd use your template to create the edit. I love that. <laughs> so we're going to click on Use Template. And here we can see all of these shots that I'd already filmed. So one walking to the airport, one on the runway, on the plane, there we go. <laughs> then on the way to VidCon, the TikTok logo, and finally the one we just recorded all together before on stage. We're just going to trim that to a nice moment. Ah, we'll click next. And let's turn the volume up. Nice. Awesome. My, my favorite shot's the last one. Everyone looks so great. But just like that, I've been able to recreate your template that simply and that easily, which is incredible. Yeah, took no time. Mm. So we're now going to be moving into my favorite part of the panel. It's the Q&A time. Woo! <laughs> so we asked you guys on the 24-7, what were your questions that you were dying to ask Charlie? You ready? I am. <laughs> So, kicking straight off at the top, we've got Chris Teddy Bear. What's the number one thing on your bucket list, Charlie? I feel like as of right now, the number one thing on my bucket list is... I... My next bucket list item of things that I want to do is I want to go see my sister on tour. Are you going to be heading over there next? Um... In, in, in a little bit. I don't know when I'm going yet. I actually was supposed to figure that out yesterday, so. Uh, so we have Chris up next. How do you manage to balance your personal and public life? Yeah, this is a tough one. It's been very, very hard to figure this out. I think for me, putting up strong boundaries. I feel like for a long time I kind of let people dictate who I was and what I do and what my life is like and all the details of every day. But I feel like now I am able to turn my phone off and hang out with my friends and not film and just get to be present and be in the moment. But I can also share certain things or share certain things to certain places. Maybe I'm, I don't talk about it on TikTok, but I'll talk about it on Twitter. And, and just making sure that I'm open and honest, but also leaving parts of my life to myself because then I'm living for everyone else, and I also want to be able to live for myself and get to learn and grow, and not everything needs to be out there, but I, do, I definitely do share 
a lot about my life. Up next, we have Duncan. If you had one word to describe your fans, what would it be? I would say dedicated because, oh my goodness, I have never met people that are as invested and dedicated in my life and my accomplishments as my fans. They're celebrating every single thing that happens, big or small, and they are just the sweetest people. And it's so nice to get to meet everyone and, and get to talk to everyone, especially people that I've known for a long time. So it's, it's really awesome. And they're just, unlike anything I've ever seen before, so dedicated. Woo! Go on the fans! <laughs> uh, so we got Imogen asking, what's your favorite song at the moment? My favorite song is A Letter to Me by Dixie D'Amelio. It's the best song on the album, I promise. And we have Annalie. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I feel like my superpower would be teleportation because traveling is a lot, so if I could just teleport, that would make it so easy. Up next, we've got Jades. How do you feel about Calmby Lane taking over you on TikTok? I feel great. I mean, I had number one for two years. I feel like it's time for someone else to have that spot. And I'm proud of him. He's a friend and I'm, it's, there's no bad blood, I promise you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it feels great to know that someone else is getting that spot, someone that is sweet and a good person and loves what they do. I think that that's the best feeling and I wouldn't want to hand it over to anyone else. So we've got time for one last question that we're going to read out. It is from Leisha. What is one thing that you're most proud of outside of social media? Wow, okay. What I'm most proud of outside of social media, I would say, I mean, I guess this goes with and without it. I think I 100% learned this from my dad, but the fact that I'm... I'm trying to think of a word. It, it sounds, I'm not going to say stubborn, but I'm very determined. And he always gave me a very open space to be able to have a conversation and be able to speak my mind and say my opinions and never feel like I can be looked over, whether it's because I'm younger or because I'm a girl. I always felt like my voice mattered, and I'm very thankful for my dad for raising me that way, and I think I've never, I let it get the best of me where I kind of stopped talking and stopped saying my opinions, but I feel like I've really been able to keep the fact that my voice matters, and I hope I'm teaching other people that their voice matters, and talk about what you love, talk about what's important to you, and, and never sell yourself short. Absolutely love that, I couldn't agree more. Now guys, Unfortunately, that is all the time we've got here today. But Charlie, thank you so much for joining me up on stage. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you guys for coming. This is fun. Everyone, make sure you remember to download Video Leap. Use Charlie's template. And we're going to be hanging out, anyone with a, a creator or industry badge, in the Creator Light Tricks Lounge back over there. So make sure you come and join us. Bye, guys. I think